Okay, it's 11 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Vilesh Nai. I hope I am audible to you. Please ping, uh, ping in the chat box if you can hear me, please. Great. Um, today we have Professor Sunil Kumar Desh Deshmukhji as our speaker. He will be talking about natural products from fungi under Myco Asia masterclass series. We started uh, Myco Asia masterclass series uh, uh, two weeks back. Uh, the first two masterclasses were taken by uh, great speaker, Professor T.S. Sunanarayan. And, and uh, now we have the tradition to continue, to, tradition to be continued by none other than, uh, you know, Professor Sunil Kumar Deshmukh. Uh, he's a very familiar face in Indian mycology. And uh, if uh, for some of the people who are not familiar with him, I will be giving a brief introduction of him, his uh, academic background, his career. Uh, that should take around five minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome, Professor Sunil Kumar Deshmukhji. Okay. Thank you. I will just give takes five minutes introducing you to today's speak on uh, today's audience. Okay, let me read out from today, uh, the write up I have made about Professor Sunil Kumar Deshmukhji. Uh, he is a distinguished and highly respected science leader whose uh, illustrious career spans several decades, uh, leaving an indelible mark on the field of mycology and uh, broader scientific research. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh uh, earned his PhD degree from Dr. Harish Singh Gaur University in Sagar, Madhya Pradesh, uh, India in 1983. Then he started his career, he joined industry. Uh, he dedicated a significant uh, portion of his career to pioneering work in the uh, in this uh, industrial mycology field, uh, primarily at uh, esteemed institutions like Sanofi India Limited, Piramal Enterprises uh, Limited in Mumbai. Uh, his uh, contribution in this role significantly advanced the understanding and application of my mycology in various industries, particularly in drug discovery. One of uh, Dr. Deshmukh's notable achievements was his uh, instrumental role in developing the microbial culture collection as, at uh, Sanofi uh, and Piramal Enterprises. This effort underscored uh, his um, commitment to expanding the knowledge base and practical applications of microorganisms in industrial settings. Uh, uh, talking about uh, Dr. Deshmukh's research contribution, uh, Dr. Deshmukh's uh, core expertise lies in the discovery of biologically active compounds from fungi. He has made significant strides in identifying antifungal, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and anti-diabetic compounds from fungal sources, unveiling numerous novel compounds that have potential to revolutionize medical and pharmaceutical industries. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh has not only published papers, he has, uh, uh, has got a great imp his impressive portfolio. He has got an impressive portfolio of intellectual property with eight patents to his credit. Actually, these patents represent innovations and discoveries that have the potential to bring about positive changes in various domains. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh has already, uh, has already authored 155 publications and he has edited 21 books uh, centered around fungi and the natural products derived from microbial success, uh, sources. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh's visionary approach to research includes uh, the creation of a diverse library of microbial metabolite extracts. This library has proved to be a crucial asset for fast tracking lead generation in drug discovery. Uh, you know, uh, not only about published publications and uh, you know, in a, uh, you know patents, Dr. Deshmukh is a great science leader. I mean, he, Dr. Deshmukh, has held prominent leadership positions in esteemed scientific societies, including serving as the past president of the Mycological Society of India. His involvement in multiple professional associations, such as the Mycological Society of India, Association of Biotechnologists and Pharmacy, uh, Society for Applied Biotechnology, Maharashtra Association of Science. Actually, uh, these undersc uh, this underscores his leadership in uh, fostering collaboration and advancement in the scientific community. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh is the president of Association of Fungal Biologists uh, based at Mumbai. Uh, he continues to inspire and lead fellow scientists. 
He also serves as an advisor to various biotechnology industries, including Green Vention Biotech Private Limited in Pune, AG Farm Bio Innovations LLP in Patiala, Punjab, India, where his expertise is uh, sought after to drive innovation and progress in, the, uh, in, in these fields. Uh, with these so brief words, uh, let me please welcome uh, Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshmukhji uh, to today's uh, program and, and uh, and invite him to give the lecture titled Natural Products from Nat uh, from Fungi. Over to you, Dr. Deshmukhji. Thank you, Bale, for giving me a chance. I will Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. So the topic of the talk is natural production of fungi. Here I will give you a little bit introduction about what is in the drugs available in the market from fungi. Whatever work I have done in Piram X, Piramal Enterprises Limited, and little bit at Terry Dicker Nanobiotechnology Center at New Delhi. So coming to the initial part, as fungi is a multi Face microorganism exhibit extraordinary range of form and structure, evolved tolerance to environmental extremes such as cold, heat, low pH, heavy metals, high pressure, radioactivity, and abnormal concentration of salts and sugars. There is estimate, some estimates are given by Hopfer that is 1.5 million species. Some other estimates are from 5.1 to 12 million species by Blackwell 2011 and U 2014. Only 1,25,000 fungal species have been described in so many places, described so far. James in 2020, he has classified recently 224 orders of fungal kingdom into 12 phyla. These are the phyla like Escomycota, Basidomycota and so on. So this is a little bit about fungi. If we talk of bioactive compound from fungi, then it starts with the mycotoxins. People started working with mycotoxin then therapeutic uses, natural pigments, food enhancer, food substances, and other industrial uses like fatty acids, protein enzymes, and so on. If we talk of natural products from uh, my point of view, natural products and their derivatives have historically been an invaluable source of therapeutic agents. About 1,000 small molecules, that is NC introduced between 1981 to 2021, roughly half of them bear natural product of their derivatives. 75% are in the area of infectious disease. Out of this, out of remaining 25, 60% are in the area of cancer. Cholesterol lowering agents, the statins, the top selling drugs of today are natural product origin, immunosuppressive drug like cyclosporin, FK506, rapamycin are of natural port origin. If you see first discovery, which is come to the limelight by Alexander Fleming by discovery of penicillin, then followed by discovery of cephalosporins, gilcopalvin, statins, and echinocandids. If you see the drug in the market, antibacterials, basically penicillin, G, cephalosporin, they are beta lectums. Fusitic acid from fusidium, this is mostly used for the superficial infection caused by dermatophytic by the bacteria, dermatophytic bacteria. This is another interesting case where the people have got the pleuromutin from the mushrooms, but initially it was not developed because it was metabolized by liver by metabolized liver and hence eliminate from the body as very high rate. People have modified here, you can see modification portion in all three cases, and that modified compounds were named as tiamutilin for veterinary medicine, well, well in mutin for the treatment of serious infectious disease in swine, retamutin used for the treatment of skin infections. These are the products in the market from this pilumutin derivative. Then after that people have started working for the biofilm inhibitors. So these are some of the important compounds like rosalinic acid, coprinucleic ductone and microprorenic acid which are inhibiting the biofilm formation. Then comes to antifungals. First, Grisophalino was discovered from penicillin. Penicillin for use for dermatophytic infection, superficial infection caused by tycopython, microsporum, and epidermophyton. Later on, echinocandines, 
were developed. Their semi-synthetic der derivatives were caspofungin, micafungin, annulafungin. Caspofungin was derivative of nemurocandine B, marketed by Merck in US 2001. Micafungin was the derivative of FR901379 developed in 2002. And annulafungin was the derivative of econocandine B, launched in 2005. These are some of the products available in the market of this echinocandine derivative, and this one is the from the Grisofalvi. Then people have started working with anti-cancer. So far, none of the compounds have been reached to the product stage in from the fungal origin. Fumidilin was one aspect from Aspergillus. People have tried to make derivatives like TNP470 and PPI2458 but these are under development stage only. Some other example is like Eludin S. It is from the Omphilotus. They have modified this portion and it was in clinical trial for leukemia. Then Hemil, Hemil, Helim, then Helimide, this is highly toxic, but when it was modified, penibulin, it was also used for, it was also in clinical trial for cell, small cell lung cancer. Myrosine we got from Iceria, then it was modified and it is modified as a fingo limoid and 2010 it was approved for treating the multiple sclerosis. We got this compound way back in 1986-87 but due to its limited pharmacological property we didn't work on this. Immunosuppressive drug like cyclosporine which is well known. Then mycophenolic acid, which was discovered much before the discovery of penicillin, but it was considered as a toxin and people have modified this on this portion and it is mycophenolate mofflet and used for preventing renal transport rejection. Similarly, cholesterol lowering drug lovastatin, it was developed from aspergillus terius. It is the first of a class lipid lipid loading agent known as HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. Widely consumed daily and play an important role in lowering the risk of cardiovascular disease. This is the market by 2025. You can see the market here. These different brands of the lower statins are representing here. So cholesterol is 32.2%. This is the maximum. This is the mono monopoline K from the pleurotus species. Then coming to my work, I have started working with endophytic fungi long back and uh, then we then it was described by people like uh, Dibari that and these are the endophytes are the microorganisms that colonize internal plant tissue pattern in 1991 defined them as a microorganism that inhibit at least for one period of their life cycle in the plant inner tissue without causing any apparent harm to the host. Similarly, Hallman 1997 described them as those that, that may be isolated from surface-like plant part are extracted from inner tissue and cause no damage to the host plant. These are some of the compounds originally isolated from the plant, later described from the endophytic fungi. This was thought this can be the alternative source of the molecules and this will also help in saving the world diminishing diversity. When we started working with, particularly with endophyte, this question was raised by our company that why you want to work with this. So justification was given that we have two biodiversity hotspots, nine phyto phytogeographical zones, 35% plant of are endemic to Indian subcontinent, different geographical regions and climatic zone ranging from tropical to Alpine, more than 8,000 kilometers of coastline and six wetlands. Red dots, whatever is shown here, we have collected the plant from almost all part from the India, wherever is possible, depending on the facility and the communication, uh, com commutation ability. These are the some of the sources represented like medicinal plant, ferns, mangrove, aquatic plants and marine algae. For isolation from leaf, we have taken the leaf, washed with water, then surface slice using ethanol, sodium hypochlorite, again ethanol washed with water, then cut into small piece while putting onto the agar plate 
we have used the half stem PDA, put half portion of the leaf into the uh, inside the median half leaf and the above, then isolated colony and put transfer then, them into the slant. While working this, we take the full leaf of that particular striped leaf, we put one side for 15 minutes on the plate, remove after 15 minutes, put the other side of the leaf to the plate to check whether our sterilization was complete or not. If we get some colony from that, then we remove those colony as a contaminant from our isolated cultures. This is the workflow, sources, isolation. We get pure culture out of this. Ferment to stage fermentation. Then we treat it, make 20 milligram per ml solution, put in micro titer plate. They preserve them at 86 degrees. We preserve them at minus 86. They go for testing. Then re-fermentation studies. Whatever comes positive, it goes to natural product chemist for the isolation of bioactive compounds. Here I would like to tell that this is the group of a team. This is a teamwork where group like fungi group, then natural product chemist, structural, structural elucidation group, patent group, and other pharmacology groups are involved in this study. Here are some of the colonies which are showing active cult colony cultures where we have got the active cultures. Fermentation process, we get a pure culture. After pure culture, they go to seed medium, then five different media, production media. Then after three days and five days, two sets, we put methanol. While putting methanol, we see that the flask has kept a little lower temperature because if you put methanol, there will be exothermic reaction and the com bioactive compound may be denaturized. So we put at lower temperature, concentrate them, screen for anti-infective then dilute them and either extract with acetate or pass it through dye and resin. Then concentrate and then concentrate, make it 20 milligram solution and screen for anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory activity. These are the cell lines what we use primarily for the anti-cancer screening that is H460, HL60, SCT116, MCF7, MIA, PACA2 that is pancreatic, then normal human fibroblast cell line that is WI38. NCI use 60 cancer panel of 60 cancer cell line. We have the coloration with onco test. They use one panel of 40 cancer cell lines. For anti-inflammatory, primarily use TNF alpha and IL6 inhibitor in TPA THP1 cell. Where whatever compost you go to human PBMCs, NF kappa B inhibitors, COX2 inhibitors. For antifungal, we have the battery of microorganisms which is Kenda alvicans, Kenda alvicans ATCC 14503, Kenda cruzine collaborator fluclear distance sensitive, Cryptococcus neoformans, Aspilus fumigators ATCC 14624, and whatever sample comes positive in this model, then they go for reproducibility studies and samples with good spectrum they go for the further activities if we get some compound some culture active then we prepare around 2.5 to 3 gram of the crude extract and give to the natural product chemist natural product chemist will dissolve them in polar and non-polar solvent and residue into water then it goes for screening then active fraction goes for chemotography then again state screening if it is showing positive, then it go for dereplication studies and then HPLC, PDA, UV, LCMS, data where such will be done. Purified compound will be go, go for the spectroscopy like NMR, mass, HRMS, then structural elucidation is done. Whenever structural elucidation is done, we maximum go, we get the known compounds and number of unknown compounds are less. So we give this structure of the compound to the patent and ask for patentability. If there is any scope for patent, then we go for semi-synthetic work. If compound is unknown, then we consider this is a leak. But before going to that, we go for the pharmacological, pharmacokinetic studies where we see whether it is showing any, any positiveness in the pharmacokinetic studies like absorption and other related things. Then 
before going to that, we'll see the mode of action of that particular compound. What is the mode of action of compound? If we see it is showing some mode of action, then we take forward. For example, this is the reticent call, which is showing the anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory activity. This is HSP-90 inhibitors, isolated from Fumicola fuscatra. Plant source was Mangifera indica. In vitro potency IC50 value was 0 0.0292, 2.7 micromole in different cell lines. This is the structure of a compound. And you can you can see here, this is the normal human fibroblast cell line. And these are the cell cancer cell line. If there is two log difference in the cancer cell line and normal fibroblast cell line, then only we will consider this for further activity. If there is no difference, then we consider it's a toxic and it is of no use for using for the anti-cancer compound. Here we treat this with the cell. Here we have taken the bank one cell line and treated with the radicicol and use the hex dye for the staining of the nucleus and daylight dye 549 for the P for the different proteins. Here we have shown the P21 and P53. There is an upregulation of 60% in P21 and upregulation of P53 is 80%. This is calculated by the computer, the software. If the reddening in the treated one is more, then it is upregulation. If reddening of the control is showing more, the nucleus dies, then it is a downregulation. Here, in the both the cases, it is upregulation. But in this case, control is showing more reddening, so there is a downregulation. That is against NF Papa B and state 3. So it is 51% down regulation in nf kappa b and 73 in state 3. in next case this again down regulation is 47 and 56 percent as akt s4 s 473 and prb s 780. in another case claves cash space 3 there is a up regulation marginal up regulation up to 40 percent in this case so what we do after getting this reading, we plot a graph. After plotting the graph, we see upregulation and downregulation at different concentration, and then we interpret the data. As you see, there is upregulation in P53 and P21 in terms of downregulation of PRB, and there is G1 arrest and finally apoptosis. Similarly, downregulation of PAKT, NF kappa in state 3, upregulation of cytosine C, caspase 9, caspase 3, and finally apoptosis. So by this, we can tell that there is a mode of known mode of action of this particular compound. Before developing any compound, we go for mode of action and then we decide whether we should work on that or not, depending on the mode of action of the compound. Here is the example where we got a compound which was molecular weight was 418, and this was isolated from this was from compound isolated from the unidentified fungus, plant source of Pangamia punneta. Compound was PM18, 11, 10. In vitro efficiency was 0 0.089 micromole in 40 cancer cell lines. This is the structure of a compound, and this is the culture of this is the morphology of a compound. We have patented and published this. If you look for the activity, this was selectively showing active against the lung cell line as well as the pancreatic cell line. Here it is 0 0.0410204. 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04, 0.04
then it shows two days this is two hours and this is 48 hours we show significance reduction in the proteins and this is the comparative density metric analysis shows that mean sm sem of three independent experiments and p is less 0 0.05 so this is the result of this of a a similarly if you see effect of a bolin o a on cell cycle kinetics a is 24 and b is 48 hours and she shows the apoptosis induction in triple best mb mda mb231 cell line after 48 hours here is a third example where it was isolated from Pongam homopsis longicola plant source was nectanthus compound was ultrasolenol a in vitro potency was ic50 was 0 0.005 micromole in 34 cell lines this shows very good ic50 but it, there was no selectivity this culture was actually we have discarded the culture and kept in the washroom after before washing watch boy told that it is showing some pigment so we brought that culture from the washroom and checked it there it some crystals were shown we have removed the crystal and checked for the dissolved check for activity it was showing good anti-cancer activity so this was producing only in the presence of light and it was producing not only ultrasolenol a but ultrasolenol a b c d e f g and its dimers also so this we published in the 2015 if you see the activity of this under 24 cell line it is showing good activity against bladder glioblastoma colon gastric lung memory melanoma then ovarian pancreatic prostate renal and uterus and mean ic50 value is 0 0.005 so because it was not showing any selectivity so we have not taken this further but still we are trying to this company is trying to develop derivatives out of it and may develop something maybe in coming future this is very interesting compound which we got from Asperger pseudovi from ekindo canine class we have identified this Asperger pseudovi later 2016 it was identified as a aspergillus molendensis this culture was isolated from the mulund area of mumbai this is the suburb of the mulund suburb of the mumbai where hex pharmaceutical was situated which is now sinophy aventis and we got the compound mulundo candy first but when we did the large scale fermentation we got the compound that is deoxymulundo candy one oxygen less and which was more effective than the Molundo candy. So it was tried to develop at Hex, Hex AG in Germany, and they have made the compound amino candy. Then it was developed and gone for the clinical trial. This was published in 1992, and a clinical trial is completed. It's showing better activity than known, known echino candies, but not marketed so far. If you see the MIC range of the compound, amino candine is activity is 0.03 to 2. Then I see MIC this, I, MIC, I, MIC 50 and MIC 90 is 0 .0, 0 0.0, and ratio to 2.1. So it is showing better than other known compounds like amphotericin B, variconazole, caspa fungin, and mica fungin. Similarly, it is showing better activity in the filamentous fungi like Aspergillus fumigatus, Fusarium, and others. So this shows better activity in yeast as well as the filamentous fungi. Similar type of results were also reported from the reported in the in, in vivo studies. So these are the representative compounds like anti-cancer, inflammation, diabetes, and anti-infectives from our group. When we started working with this, we were getting good num amount of the new compounds but later on the comp the num getting the new compounds were reduced drastically so we have started working on different aspects of that then one of the aspect was epigenetic approach for metabolic diversification epigenetic modifier being changed in genetic operation without any alteration in dna sequence of fungi epigenetic modification using chemical inhibitors more specifically, HDAC and DNMT inhibitors are inducers, 
are found to be effective in stimulating the transcription of annotated or silent biosynthetic gene cluster, thereby resulting in the production or enhancement of variety of secondary metabolites. This is the normal way of production of metabolite transcription translation biosynthesis. Then DNA, DNMT inhibitors include 5 other side in others, HDEC inhibitors include sodium butrides and others. So these are the commonly used inhibitors in fungi. Here is the example where we have isolated the Cephalotheca favelutia from Eugenia Jambulena, Gorega, Mumbai. Biological activity was anti inflammatory IC50, IL6 was 6 microgram per ml, TNF alpha was 10 microgram per ml. This was the scleroderma isolated from this. We have published. But when it was treated with the 5 edge cytin, you see the difference. This is the extract. And this is the compound produced scleroderma. But when it was treated with 5 edge cytin, we have got extra peaks here. This is the enhanced peak of scleroderma. And we got this extra peaks 1, 2, 3, 4. These all peaks were active when we tested for the anti inflammatory activity. And this is the RT of the scleroderma. And this is the major peak what we got from the treatment. So this is one example. Another example is where the aspergillus was treated with the valpuric acid. This is the compound, targeted compound was the fumicunus zolin C. When it was treated with valpuric acid, this peak was enhanced drastically. And reduction of the other peaks. This shows by epigenetic modification, we can enhance the production of desired compound, but depending on what concentration we are using. Here is the here quantification. You can see this is the compound where we can see the control and this is the valpuric acid treated one. Fine. It was also shown by the RT-PCR profiling of the gene and we showed all genes exhibited significant upregulation of valpuric acid treated culture compared to that of untreated one. Fine. So this, this way we can either enhance the thing or we can get the diversity of a molecule, particular molecule in the desired culture. Another was the co-cultivation. Our idea was that if we do the co-cultivation, we may get the environment of what the culture was growing. So what we do, we take an active culture and the culture isolated along with that particular particular environment. So we this culture can be bacterium, this culture can be fungus, this can be bacterium, bacterium. So here is one example where polytrichum and corinospora were isolated from Nothopoditis from the Western Ghat. And then it was cultured. When it was cultured, F1 and F2 yielded around 33 and 16 a microgram respectively. But when it was done, the co-culturing studies, the yield was around 146 microgram per liter. Only limitation in this that we have to standardize the method by which the co-culture is done. If the percentage of inoculum is changed, then this never works. So we have to inoculate the, we have to do the standardization of inoculation and we can enhance the production of the particular desired compound. Another approach was to biotransformation because when you know some, some compound is pr produced in large quantity, but we it is not desired, but some derivative of it is of desired, then in that case, we use the biotransformation. It can be done by using fungus. It can be used be using by then the bacterium. Here is the example. This is not by our, this is not ours because we have not published our data so far. In this case, penicillium was penicillium what species was used and which is this this use the desylation of particular compound. Estagolite one and two and uh, two estagolite four. It is estagolite four is used in the food as well as the pharmaceutical industries. So these analysis highlight the complex metabolite system involved in an endophytic and plant host community besides the unexplored niche of new drugs. Then after that also we were having the problem. We were again getting the known compounds. So we started genome sequencing of the microbes and generate bioinformatics database to information. 
This will predict the presence of gene cluster responsible for synthesis of novel class of compounds as well as novel scofold. Infer the phylogenetic state of a gene cluster towards the stain improvement of a particular compound of interest. Correlate the productive genome data with chemical fingerprinting of a culture which is known to produce a particular bioactive class of compound. Predict the biosynthetic pathway of novel compounds enabled to gen genetic or metabolic engineering. Basic idea was to get the major group of secondary metabolite that are polyketides, NRPS, ribosomal or non-ribosomal peptides, terpenoids, particularly C5 isoprene units. Except ribosomal peptides are are made by synthesis or synthesis are, and are modified by dehydrogenases, oxygenases, hydrolysis, methylases, oxidoreductase, transferase enzymes. You know why location are they are secondary metabolite genes are organized in discrete cluster around the synthetic genes. So first we have taken the example of the one streptomyces that is streptomyces colicolor. The technical platform was iron, proton and alumina. Bioinformatory tools was anti-SMAS, SMAF, cluster skin, cluster scan, SB, SPAK, NRPS, NP. And these are the details of the genomes. What we got total size was 8.67 MBP. Then terminal inverted repeat is 21.653, G plus C contained was 72.12% and so on. When we were, we have used simple media, we have got a very limited number of compounds, but why the media, knowing the genome sequence and the modification of the media, we have got a large number of different class of compounds that antibiotics, CD4, pigments, lipids and other molecules. So this is the diversity of the molecules in one culture using genome sequence and then we have modified the media and got all these fatty acids and pigments and others. Then another, te another technique was genome editing technique which used GNF, TelNF, RNA interface, CRISPR-Cas9 system and people are using CRISPR-Cas9 system that is a versatile and user-friendly system to system for targeting gene knockout and integration. So, if you look for CRISPR-Cas9 system, then this consists of two units, that is Cas9 unit as well as single sgRNA. sgRNA is of two units, that is crRNA and transRNA. Here you can see CRISPR-RNA plus two units. Then what it does is, is take the synthesis of sRNA by to Cas9 and it resulting the complex can catalyze the double strand DNA break. In the target DNA comprised of Prontimer sequence matching to the prosper of the sgRNA and downstreaming protospacer adjacent morphine that is PAM sequence where it will join to the DNA here and then it can modify or reduce the cut the DNA Prontimer or you can add Prontimer DNA into this particular 20 ml 20 ml DNA, DNA into the our gene into that particular DNA. So this is the very user friendly technique. Only one has to be very careful while using this that what type of gene you want to add or cut. It we should be very careful in selecting that. This we are used for the fungal pigment that is particularly satinin from the monoscus pigment which is producing the pigment and uh, satinase is producing, we have reduced the gene which is producing the satinase. Coming to the next part of my work was that is natural color. Natural food colors are dyes or pigment which have its origin from natural sources like vegetable, micro, biological and animal or mineral sources. Advantage is no toxic accumulation in consumer, safe for use for all age group. Most are natural program provides other health benefits like having antioxidant, antimicrobial, immunomodicular activity, food color from the natural sources without any addition of chemicals in the production or extraction process get approval for its use very easily. We have published a review on this in Frontier, natural, Frontier Microbiology in 2019. If you see the drawback of using synthetic color, First, I will tell you what are the ad advantage. They are stable, easy to produce, cost effective, 
having superior coloring property and less doses required. But the negative effects include chemical interaction, allergic to anaphasic stock, hypersensitivity to children, possible carcinogenic agent, non-environmental friendly. Natural colors are assumed to safe as these are non-allergic, non-toxic, non-carcinogenic and biodegradable and render no risk to the environment. This is the instrument what we are using for the checking the color or hue of that particular extract. This is a chromometer. We get a roller scatter graph out this. In this, here A plus is red, minus is green, B plus is yellow, B minus is blue. So by this graph, we can make out what is the percentage of red, green, yellow and blue pigment present in our extract. Here we use the carmine as a one standard and B true is another standard where monos here is the example B true. This is the data of B true. Hue angle is 352. A monoscus red is 56.6, which shows that it is the quality is inferior. So we have to purify that and check with, to get the better quality of the color. This is the workflow. We get a colony after seven days. Pigments in liquid media, color crude. Then we do the TLC, silica column, HPLC, and structure of the compound. These are the some of the cultures which is produced in the pigments like monoscus, homopsis, xyleria, and so on. So here we get a monoscus like pigment, hydroxy, anthroquinone, ultrasolanol A, monoscus like pigment produced by the penicillium. This is the culture which work we work extensively. Still, one of my students is working on that. This was the teleromyces, isolated from the Avicenia marina, collected from the beaches near Aliva. So when we, I, this was actually we have collected for the production of anti-cancer compound, but we got a pigment out of this, and this pigment was not showing any toxicity to the cell line tested, including a normal WI, normal human fibroblast cell line that is WI38. So we have tried to get this 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 culture and produced into different media. We have done different studies like effect of temperature, effect of the light, and so on. So this is the morphology of a particular culture under a scanning microscope, normal microscope. These are the tentative compounds isolated by U HPLC MS. So this was producing different type of compound. Still, we are doing the activity guided isolation compound from this culture because this culture, though they have identified it as a teleromyces, but it is showing some difference with the known standard. So, we may be reporting this a new species, and activity guided isolation is in progress. But we have published the preliminary data in Frontage Microbiology in 2021. Another aspect what we covered in Terry Deacon Nanobiotech Center was antioxidant that according to FDA substance used to pre preserve food by retarding deterioration, rancidity or discoloration due to oxidation. Mechanism involved delaying auto-oxidation by inhibiting formation of free radicals, preventing oxidation by donating electrons from their functional group. This we published in 2020. This is the antioxidant, free radical and healthy item. So similarly, this is for the ascorbic acid. Then it is tested by DPPHSA, where we use the DPPS radical. We test the sample that if it is, there should be de 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 decoloration. Activity is expressed EC50 equal to concentration required to quench 50% of DPPHSA radical. This is our primary assay. Then this is confirmed by the OREC assay. This is the fluorescent probe is used here, and we see ROO and O and O group. It is fluorescent probe, probe plus blank, then fluorescent probe plus hydrophilic or antioxidant, hydrophilic antioxidant, and we see the antioxidant capacity including AUC of antioxidant and AUC of blank. And we finally see whether it is compared with our known antioxidants. We have got some compounds, but these were already known compounds from the literature, so we got some compounds like Fomaclodin D from Rhizophora. This was also collected from the creek near Bhayandar. 
this is uh, the same rhizophorum mucunata from same creek area and we got the compound floaton which was earlier reported. Similarly, we have got a series of compounds from this Escomycota species which was reported on Candelia and this I am represent showing only the four or five but we have got a series of compounds but the activity profile was in the range of 100 to 80 to 100 micromole. So this is much inferior to the known compound. So in conclusion, rich chemical diversity exists in the endophytic fungi or fungi and can be used as a drug as such or after chemical modification. By epigenetic modification, co-culturing and biotransformation, the chemical diversity can be explored at greater extent. These fungi can be used to get natural food color, antioxidants enzyme of various pharmaceutical and agriculture application. There is an urgent need to develop culture collection of endophytic microbes. These are some of the books edited. I want to thank particularly Professor Colin Barrow, Alfred Deacon, Professor Chair in Biotechnology for helping me at the work at Terry Deacon Nanobiotechnology Center. And he was the principal guide for most of the students work under me at Terry Deacon Biotechnology Center. Dr. Shilpa Venekar, she was associated with me at Brahmal Enterprises Limited for almost 15 years and contributed significantly in the work shown. Shivankar Agrawal is scientist B in Indian Council of Medical Research, New Delhi. Now he has gone to Ireland as a postdoctoral fellow. Tanuka Sen, she has also worked with me. And then she joined Australian National University. Now she is postdoctoral fellow at Oxford University, UK. So these people have contributed significantly in the work what I have done. This is the picture of the 2017 presidential, when I was the president of Microsoft Society of India, present situation. And uh, we are having the first annual meeting of the Association of Fungal Biologists, SIS College, Mumbai. And there will be international conference on biology, biodiversity, and biotechnology of fungi on December 1st and 2nd, 2023. This is the place, Terry Deacon Nanobiotechnology Center, where I worked last. Thank you very much. Um, um, thank you, uh, Professor Sulil Kumar Deshmukhji. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was an indeed in a master class on, on, on natural products from fungi. Uh, we, uh, but uh, for beginners, it could be a little bit overwhelming. Therefore, we have a detailed, uh, like we are going to have a detailed uh, question and session answer. The first question will be from me, actually. <laughs> the first question is, uh, you suggested that one of the ways to go forward would be have a dedicated culture collection for endo endophytic microbes. Uh, like. If you look at the status of culture collection in India, we have some culture collections like MDCC in Chandigarh, we have NFCCI in Pune, we have some more MCN. You know, what do you, why do you think we would need a dedicated culture collection for endophytic fungi? I mean, they can't it be uh, part of the existing ones. Basically, when we get two species, suppose you take an example of collateral trichum. If you get it four collateral trichum from four different sources, the compound produced may be different. And when it goes to the standard culture collection, they will say this is a piece of collateral trichum and they will club all together. And that will be considered as a one culture because polygenically they are the same. But there is a difference in the genes. Uh, thank you. I understand your perspective. You know. yeah, I, when I was in Imtech Chandigarh, we used to get lots of cultures for deposition. Then, uh, it was logistically and uh, you know, resource-wise, we couldn't accept all the cultures because if you start accepting, there will be you know almost thousands of cultures and maintaining them, especially deep freezing, and it would take lots of energy and uh, resources. So we thought we would accept only taxonomically novel cultures and some cultures with the novel properties. You know, uh, but thank you for highlighting that. Uh, probably need to have a dedicated culture collection on endophytic fungi. Now uh, we will uh, let the audience uh, ask questions. Uh, please raise your hand. I will let you ask questions. Uh, please don't break the queue. Uh, uh, first, I will request 
Sachin Rajput, please ask your question. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sir, uh, in fungi, some fungi secrete uh, uh, chemicals in their environment, while some of them are uh, secreting, uh, not secreting, they are intracellularly packed. So in case of uh, fungi, uh, in case of um, th therapeutic use, so what should be the approach to find out active metabolite uh, like you don't miss out on sometimes uh, it can be outside sometimes it, it is inside when we grow in flask right so yeah. what would be your approach that's all see basically all all fungi which are present in the nature they are producing some or other met metabolite for their survival hmm. so they are smarter than us only thing is that we can get only one to two percent or three percent of fungi in the laboratory condition for production of this metabolite so what we do we try different media we try the co-culturing and other genome sequencing to get those compounds to see at least whatever the class of compounds are present then we try to give the different media for the intracellular compounds we treat the acetone and methanol and see whether some bioactivity things are there so that way we proceed further okay sir okay so basically uh the uh, methodology for both in both the cases will be very varying right yeah yeah see for individual culture suppose we, we have worked with this molundo canyon culture it was not producing anything in the beginning but when we put into the it was got contaminated with some other culture and the, we, it was showing inhibition of that particular fungus then we thought something is there then we modified the media and got it that and, and got the this mulundo candy out of it okay sir thank you good day sir thank you sir oh, rajesh sri please ask me. Uh, sir uh, recently i have uh, did uh, some lcms ex uh, experiment uh, from the ethyl acetate extract of some fung fungi but the problem is um, I, when i am searching uh, for the bands uh, in the nist database they are showing a, a less than of 300 or 200 match values so in such cases uh, um, uh, uh, is there any alternate database where i can check uh, for the probable compounds and um, uh, my second question is if there is a, a, a coelution issue uh, uh, suppose uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, liquid chromatography step uh, was probably not good in such case uh, uh, um, in such case is there uh, any way to know uh, the uh, uh, compounds from uh, the individual bands see basically when you are extracting particularly antimicrobial or antifungal active antibacterial antifungal activity you should also check the spent whether your thing is coming out in the ethyl estate ethyl estate or not if it is not coming out you have to try a different solvent like dichloromethane and others because some compounds are polar some compounds are non polar and even you have to try different ph for extraction so you will get a particular compound then you can run a tlc and then put the TLC onto the plate and check whether what type of compound is active. So you should work on that particular active compound. If you look for the LCMS and other things, then you will get a thousands of compounds you will be lost in between. Thank you. Uh, actually, I uh, was trying to understand uh, what kind of compounds are being produced by my fungi. Uh, so, uh, so I uh, uh, decided to uh, send the entire uh, uh, entire ethyl acetate dried extract uh, for LCMS. So that is uh, that is the mistake uh, here. Sir, good morning, sir. See, if you send. There will be primary metabolite, there will be secondary metabolite, and so 
so it is very difficult to identify all the compound present in that so one should target the compound what are compo what type of compound what class of compound you want then only you can get some idea okay thank you very much टॉक्सिकोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट एसोसिएटेड यूज ऑफ फंगल नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट एंड सेकेंड वन इज हाउ माई क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड इनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर In the production of products by fungi. Um, first question is not clear to me. Are there any safety concerns or toxicological aspect associated with the use of fungal natural products? See, basically, if you see the fungi, fungi are also producing mycotoxins. So when you are working with bioactive metabolites, that time you should use some cell lines. to check whether it is toxic to that particular plant yes. some people use the chick embryo assay to check whether this is toxic so first you have to eliminate the toxin then you have to see the activity profile okay. so that is the one thing and environment also play an important role in the yes production of the secondary metabolite different temperature different ph soil conditions media conditions suppose you are using the pda If you using half a stand PDA, one fourth stand PDA, yeah. then plain agar, the production of the compound yeah. will be different. Mm -hmm. It may vary. Some may be common, some may be not producing. Okay. Okay, sir. Shilpa Chai, please. Good morning, sir. Bully. Uh, sir uh, my question is the microfungi is cultivated into the liquid broth that time yeah. have been in uh, some compounds in secreting in the liquid medium na that yeah. uh, how to use isolating in only using in ethyl acetate uh, some ipolar compounds all of them is any possibilities to isolating that way? see basically people are trying with ethyl acetate but one should try ethyl acetate dichloromethane and so on secondly oh. you should use the dye and resin that is at 20 if not extracting out of that you have to use cation resin or anion resin even if not working in that case you can use the charcoal and dilute it with the respective solvents oh. different method has to be tried depending oh. on the type of compound you are looking for okay sir sir another one question sir uh some endophytic fungi is isolated the some compounds after you analyze it in hplc and all, all of the structure elucidation after that compound naming some uh, earlier is reported into the some plants that is the any possibility sir the fungal compounds into the same structures all of them see basically when we are isolating the endophytic fungi from the plant particularly yes sir We, there are chances that it may be producing a compound which is already reported from the plant, <laughs> yes, but sir. there may be different compounds also. Yes, sir. One can compare that whether this is producing similar compound or different compounds. <clears throat> okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Come on, David, please. Can I have the? Hello. Hello. Ask your question. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, tell me. Uh, my question is, um, how uh, uh, this uh, specific temperature or pH will be need uh, for uh, 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 toxic uh, fungal growth or? Uh, Uh, beneficial fungal. This uh, temperature or pH specific temperature and pH will be needed. See, basically, if you see the to toxic producing fungi, in that case, temperature as well as humidity both are important. Like something is like as well as flowers is growing into the grains, then we be producing toxic. If we change the conditions, then especially orig, it produces the enzyme. So 
it you have to change the condition you extendize the process for the production of that particular compound or particular enzyme uh, but no specific ph no specific temperature see um, i mean uh, how much uh, uh, temperature how much ph see it depends you have got this culture from the climatic condition so you have to extend the condition if it is something from the standard culture collection then we know this these are the conditions but when it is from the environment we have to check everything and then we, we have to standardize that okay under this condition this is producing this okay sir thank you mohan kumar please uh yes sir uh, sir one of your present one of your slide i found that uh during after the fermentation of uh, uh, the fungus uh, when the broth is produced you mix the broth with the methanol and yeah. concentrate with the broth uh, yeah. but for, uh, broth uh, again it is a water based one and the methanol both are miscible yeah. and uh, both have different uh, boiling points yeah uh, so uh, how can we concentrate that so because uh, when you go for uh, uh, the heating method or anything so a methanol will evaporate first and this one will concentrate and both having the same kind of uh, polarity see uh, basically we add the methanol to take out the material inside the culture so whatever intracellular material is there that is come out because of the methanol and we concentrate that at reduced pressure so what happened we are only concentrating at 40 45 degree celsius so methanol will come out of this so when we are removing the methanol out of this so what happened that after removal of the methanol we can extract is very acidic if you are not remove the methanol in that case methyl extract we may not be able to extract the particular compound mabhi ano belo ek kaam ho gaya no ano ek chuti ye lo da i ko but tell me uh, please continue sir please so we are putting methanol to remove that and then what we do before extracting we try to reduce the number of amount of the methanol to minimal so after concentration we again dilute it with the water with the same volume or we double it and then extract it so whatever metabolite is there that is extracted out and secondly what we try in certain cases where we see the culture is novel we pass it through dye and resin and elute with methanol and finally with acetone so there is a possible we try to see that all the whatever absorb onto the dye and hp20 resin that is come out of that and we test it after concentration concentration is always done at reduced pressure so chances of uh, methanol is coming out is 100% but maybe traces are remaining there so what is the difference between this fungal defensin and antimicrobial compound uh, are both are same only no? uh, in a way because defensin work against uh, certain uh, uh, pathogen and antimicrobial compound against pathogen see basically defensin means they are they are that is in the environment and antimicrobial is partic for particular microorganism we suppose you are taking antimicrobial that is against staphylococcus aureus or candida albicans or aspergillus fumigatus so these are to miss these are term used by different people working in different groups but for me these are metabolite produced by the fungi which is of different use because fung fungi is producing for their own benefit but we are using for our benefit like anti cancer anti inflammatory anti diabetic anti microbial and so on Okay, Dr. Gunjan Sharma, please. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir, for the wonderful and informative talk. My question is regarding the significance of these uh, therapeutic metabolites or pigments that these fungal endophytes are producing. What's what's the ecological role? Like they are certainly not used by the fungi, and uh, pigments and uh, like if it's something related to plant growth promotion maybe it's related to the symbiosis that is existing between uh, the plant and the fungi but i don't understand the therapeutic metabolites and pigments so that's my first question 
and uh, the second question is regarding uh, more about the methodology if we have multiple compounds in our extract and uh, some of them are too low for detection so how can we go about that like uh, if there are multiple compounds and also some of them are low in concentration and we don't know what's there we are more into discovery mode so how can we be sure that which one is providing the bioactivity and uh, another last question is regarding tlc so if again it's an unknown compound how can we select the standard and the solvent for example pigment we don't know which pigment it is producing see basically this culture is producing pigment for their survival i will give you an example of oxenthron conjugatum which is producing the actually it is producing the orange pigment and different class of compounds are reported from there so when it is stick to the feather of a particular bird so it is exposed to the uv light and these pigments are helping them in surviving so this is an example of pigment why fungus are producing the pigments why the fungi cultures are the spores are pigmented coming to their activity as a what you call uh, for the there are multiple compounds and in low concentration how can we know which one of them is providing the bioactivity see suppose you want to looking for any microbial activity in that case what you can do you can run a tlc and put that tlc onto a plate so we will come to know which compound which portion of that compound is active so you can concentrate onto that secondly you can do the hplc collect the fractions and test them against particular pathogen so you will come to know that okay this particular path particular peak is active against that so you know the rt of that particular peak and you can when you are concentrating larger amount then you can collect that particular peak and test it so one peak before and one peak after so that not, no means the compound is not lost okay sir uh and regarding if something is unknown so how can we choose the standards because in tlc we need to run the standard also you see initially first you should know what is the um, what is the active principle present over there and we don't compare the structure we just compare the activity suppose you want to looking for antibacterial in that case you are looking against gram positive then you should have the penicillin if you are using against gram negative then you should have the streptomycin and then you compare whether it is better than particular standard or not and structure only you will come to know by the spectroscopic analysis like uh, you do the H nmr mass proton nmr and so on okay sir thank you i request the esteemed particip esteemed uh, participants to ask the first question first then wait for uh, the speaker to reply then you can probably move on to the second question all right thank you uh, hamsini please good afternoon sir the so my question is what are the most promising fungal metabolites for neurological disorders see i have never worked with this okay but some mushrooms people are using for that like uh, cordyceps and others for this i have no idea much idea about this and also sir what are, are there any limitations uh, for the extraction of natural products from fungi uh, actually if you know the target then there is no problem but if you don't know the target then there is a problem because see if you know it is antibacterial antifungal so they can you can take take out that particular portion and then you can test against that particular cell line or bacteria or some kenf uh, alpha and other activity so actually there is a lot of limitations but uh, still we can get the compound and also my last question is sir sir once we have extracted the natural products from the fungi how can we bring that to into a market see for bringing from isolation to the market it takes around 10 to 15 years time so first you have to isolate the compound then you have to do the pharmacological pharmacokinetics and others then you have to see the in vivo activity in compare to the particular standard in the market then you have to do the clinical trial phase one phase two phase three then with the small number of the animals then the then the human being 
particular group of human being and then it decides the company decide that whether it is to be marketed or not because sometimes they have some interest so they will not market this simply because your compound is showing better activity so that is because the finance is involved in that so they will de they will decide based on their financial interest thank you sir uh, Hamsini, uh, I hope you are aware of uh, magic mushrooms. Uh, if you are not, please Google about it or maybe just get information about it in chat. I mean, magic mushrooms are the future for uh, treating drug resistant uh, depression. Okay, that's the information I got for you. Uh, I request Thank Ms. You. Ms. Patel to ask the question. Jigista Patel, are you there? Okay, Dr. Sishipala, please. Dr. Sishipala, you have any question? Okay. Hello. Good yes. morning, sir. Yes, yes. yes. Tell me. Yeah, for, it is an extremely good uh, uh, process of uh, using uh, fungal pigments for food colorants. But most people uh, object for toxicity associated with the fungal metabolites see when we started working with this monoscus particularly this culture was showing the presence of cytrine this is stock mycotoxins so okay. by casper cas9 technique we have removed the gene which was responsible for the production of cytrine and oh, no. after that when we tested that pigment it was showing no toxic effect onto the means no toxic effect so i can tell you that water stain we are use it is safe to use okay sir okay sir thank you sir sir i have another question which is written in the message please read later if time permits you can ask so dr you can ask no problem yes sir now uh, with the lcms and the softwares we are able to identify certain metabolites yeah if it is a known metabolite, the software will identify. Yeah. But for an unknown metabolite, so much process is there. Mycologists have a limitation of using so many chemical, biochemical, biophysical techniques. In, in such cases, whom to approach and how to sort about? See, basically, you should have the collaborative work. Like some people like I am Jammu, they were working with Dr. Ram Vishkarma and others. Some okay. other groups are also working in that. So you should collaborate with them with okay. the proper understanding, proper memorandum of understanding that, okay, this will be the fate of this particular, if this is the fate, what, what should be the patent publication, all those things. So you can Fine. discuss with them and you can sign MOU and can go for, can go ahead okay. with them. Okay, but thank you. But mycologists are along, along, along natural product chemists, you can't do anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Pushpanjal, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Am yeah. I audible? Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Goli. Sir, I have one question that we have isolated so many thyroid fungus from the OTs of the hospital. Yeah. So, is, is there any fungus or uh, their metabolites which are having anti fungal activity against the thyroid fungus? Which fungus? We are pigmented fungus. We have isolated from the OT of the hospitals. Yeah. When we did the aromycology study. Yeah. And most of the fungus are thyroid fungus. Yeah. So I want to know is there any study done like that uh, is antifungal activity on the thyroid fungus? See, basically, so, we have got trichophytan rubrum, which was producing the red pigment. We have got mentagrophytis from hospital from the pots and others. So what we see that if you really try this, some antibiotics like what you call this, echinocandins, they are active against that. We have taken the activity of some uh, azole compounds. They are also active against this fungi, which is found in the either in the pots or in the aeroflora of that particular environment. Because I have worked extensively on keratophilic fungi and aerospora fungi. So we know that these are effectively, they are actually effective against all these fungus. Okay. Thank you, sir. Ms. Patel, please ask your question. 
हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग बोलिए सर आई वांट टू नो अबाउट एल एल एच आर एल सी एम एस टेस्ट फॉर फंगल आइडेंटिफाई फॉर फंगल या सी इवन इफ यू सी द आईआईटी मुंबई दे हैव द फैसिलिटी ओके सर यू यू इफ यू इफ यू टेक द प्रायर अपॉइंटमेंट टू देम एंड इफ यू वर्क विद देम दे विल गिव ऑल द आइडियाज व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कंपाउंड इज प्रेजेंट ओवर देयर इवन आईआईटी दिल्ली इट इज इवन i am jammu the facilities there so i know these three four places where the facilities existing okay sir thank you sir professor shivastav please oh thank you ha uh, namaskar uh, professor nikbot so very nice listening to you uh, i just have a few questions yeah uh, i basically try to produce nanoparticles yeah and for a class demonstration i show with plant extracts yeah and for project my project work i use plant viruses yeah uh, for that i again have to enter into the plant system yeah and i produce these nanoparticles and try to functionalize them yeah uh, because for vaccines for antibodies which mm. is my larger objective mm. i just want to know from you uh, that how is the situation as far as the mycology or micro nanotechnology is concerned where in you are using uh, mycel mycelial cultures and yeah. try to use them for uh, uh, producing nanoparticles and i believe uh, the the challenge we face in producing nanoparticles for plant systems is the glycosylation if i want to produce an antibody or a vaccine so the glycosylation pattern in plants is different so if you are employing the glycosylation machinery of the plants it is much different than animal so i have to do lot of modifications but i believe fungi are more closer to animals and yeah. their glycosylation pattern is much similar and easy to manipulate vis-a-vis uh, the plant system so and fungi are also very easy to culture the turnaround time is much smaller compared to plants and the the plant viral system which i am using so i i believe you worked with uh, the terry deacon university collaboration which is yeah. a na- nanotechnology center and a biotechnology yeah. center so you must be having knowledge or at least you can guide me yeah, as basically. to if we want to take this approach to see, produce my uh, things of interest see i had never worked with this type of thing we have worked with only nano zinc nano iron for seed seed coating okay yeah so mm-hmm. i have never heard of the virus so i may not be able to answer your question no no as far as the production of nanoparticles using fungi fungi yeah, and and i just want to have an information on that how see, easy it is and how it is uh, easy to produce the nanoparticles but yes. the limitation with this that you have to standardize the process yeah because it varies from sometimes if process is not standardized varies from 10 nano to 50 nano or 100 nanometer so one has to standardize the process mm-hmm. if it is standardized then absolutely no problem because we have worked with some like uh, one culture work which was isolated from rajkot we have got the silver nano particles zinc nano particles that yeah. it took almost 8 months to standardize the process mm-hmm. and we have extensively used the tem and sem for standardizing that, uh, yeah characterization and other things right yeah yeah okay Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and any of the professors want any comments? Is uh, you can ask or make the comments, Dr. Sanjay Saxena. Okay. Thank you, sir. No comments. Okay, thank you so much. Ah, uh, uh, I I know there are many more questions. Uh, many people want to ask questions. Please email it to Dr. Deshmukh. I have already shared the email address of Dr. Deshmukh uh, in the chat box. Please ask him there. um dr dipak before i let you go i would like to ask you what are your advices for young people who are getting into the field of uh, natural drug discovery not only from fungi maybe from uh, other life forms actually the basic first thing that they should form a group with chemist particularly natural product chemist and spectroscopy group for identify the compound because see mycologists have limitation i have worked for almost 30 35 years with this but still if you ask me to identify some compound 
I may be giving the structure of very small molecules. If, if it is known, if it is unknown, it is next impossible for me to give the structure. So there should be some understanding with between mycologist as well as with the natural product chemist, spectroscopy, then pharmacological people, and you have to select the target for which you want to work. Secondly, the scope of this fungi, which is coming up, is using for various type of uh, mycelial based things like making bricks. Some people are using for making leather. Some people are using for making the cloths, all those things. So this is one upcoming field. In India, people are not working, even the working for the packaging material, that is one aspect. So this once I talk to some people in IIT, but they are saying they don't have the background of mycology and this is not the part of their uh, scope. So they are not work, but I feel this is one of the upcoming things and uh, which will be very good for the sustainable development. Because uh, if you collaborate with one IIT person, uh, whatever effort push is less in compared to the drug discovery and if you have to work in drug discovery particularly in that case you have to do the collaborative work individually you cannot do anything okay thank you very much uh, dr deshmukh i think this is the first time i am listening to you even though i met you in thailand maybe 2005 or 6 maybe in bangkok uh, but i did not listen to you then this is the, my first uh, i mean this is the first time i'm listening to you it was very nice listening to you all the work of 30 35 years uh, thank you so much uh, i think uh, many of the uh, many particip participants have got uh, some good insights today uh, some tips to uh, improvise their work and I hope some of them will contact you and I hope you'll mentor some of them uh, you know, for, the, for their benefit. I, I thank you very much uh, for taking your precious time today you know, on a beautiful Sunday. And I will okay. meet you in Mumbai. So thank you so much. <laughs>